Hi everybody. So we are officially in the middle of a global pandemic. There is a lot to be worried about, a lot to be thinking about. But here on Karen Puzzles, I wanted to keep it light and fun, give you a bit of an escape. And something that I have loved seeing over the past few weeks is how many of my IRL friends and like huge celebrities are just getting into puzzles. I guess when everybody is forced indoors, they remember how fun puzzles are. Welcome to the club. So today I wanted to talk about one of the least expensive gradient puzzles I found, which is Color Challenge from the Vivid Collection from Buffalo Games. If you haven't seen my channel before, I love a good gradient puzzle. There is the original 1000 Colors puzzle, which comes from a company in Australia and is pretty expensive. There is Gradient by Cloudberries, which comes from a company in London, Cloudberries. That one's also pretty expensive, but this one comes from Buffalo Games, which is a huge company. They sell directly in the US and it only costs $12 on Amazon. Also, I just wanna mention that I have this puzzle because one of you sent it to my PO box. I do not remember who, I am so sorry, it was a while ago, but whoever you are, thank you so much. I really enjoyed doing this one, so let's get into it. So the puzzle box is pretty standard. The front is just the puzzle design with a thousand in one corner and the logo in the other corner. The sides of the box have everything you need to know and the background continues around the sides. So it's nice and colorful. I like that they show you the actual size of the puzzle piece and that they tell you the size of the finished puzzle. The back of the box almost looks like an advertisement for their company, but I like the photo. It looks like something I would post on my Instagram. So when you open the box, I thought this was interesting. Instead of being shrink wrapped or having stickers on the edges to keep the box closed, the box is actually glued shut. So you have to wedge your fingers in there to pop it open. I don't love that it ends up tearing the cardboard. I think it looks a little messy, but it's not the end of the world. So I also thought it was interesting that the pieces are just loose in the box. They're not sealed in a bag like most puzzles I've gotten, but I wasn't missing any pieces, so good on them for not wasting plastic. So on the sides of the inside of the box, there's a little more company information, and they have this ad for their Puzzle Presto, which looks like contact paper that you put on the back of a puzzle to hang it. So I might have to try that out at some point. Again, I don't love that you have residue from the glue on the puzzle box, but for the low price you're paying, it's fine. So the puzzle comes with a poster that shows the full image, as well as a few other puzzles the company offers. So now let's talk about the pieces. At first, I thought they were just the normal piece shapes and all of the normal shapes are there, but there are also a handful of pieces with this diagonal connector, which I haven't seen a lot of before. The pieces are pretty shiny, so there was a lot of glare on this puzzle and I had to stand up for a lot of it just so that I could see what I was doing. I would say the cardboard is of medium thickness. It's not as thin as dollar store puzzles I've done, but not as thick as some of the more expensive premium puzzles that I've done. There were also a couple times where a layer of the cardboard would be stuck in the holes, which is a manufacturing error that you get sometimes with cheaper puzzles, but again, it's not a huge deal. And there was basically no puzzle dust, so that was definitely a plus. So obviously I started this puzzle by separating out the edges and sorting the pieces into a rainbow. If you've never done a gradient puzzle before, it might look difficult, 
but it's actually easier than you think because all of the colors are grouped together in their own section rather than every color being scattered across the whole puzzle. So as I was putting together the edge, I was happy to see that the pieces locked together enough that I could pick up large sections and move them around. And then when I got started on the first corner, I was so confident because the pieces were just going in so quickly, one right after the other. But that's because there weren't a whole lot of these green pieces to work with. As I got more into the yellow and the orange section, I definitely slowed down because there were more pieces and a larger area that they could potentially go into. I actually ended up skipping to the other corner and working my way up, which again, went quickly, and then I slowed down in the middle again. So from there, I just kept working my way into the center until I had finished the whole thing. So the texture, the design on this puzzle, definitely makes it a little more difficult than other gradient puzzles I've done because it's not a straight gradient. The pieces get darker and then lighter again. You definitely need good color vision in the red and orange spectrum to do this puzzle and you need to do it in good light or else you'll never be able to see the slight differences in color. The texture did make it easier in the sense that you could use the lines to figure out what type of piece you were looking for, like if it had a dark section in one corner. But since so much of the puzzle is this red and orange center section, it was not as easy as I was expecting. So I actually did this puzzle over three days. It's one that you'll probably want to take breaks from since it's just a lot of the same thing over the entire puzzle. It took me two and a half hours on the first day, an hour and a half on the second day, and an hour on the third day, which is a total of about five hours. That's definitely more than the two and a half hours the 1000 colors gradient puzzle takes me, but much less than the 12 hours the color changing gradient puzzle took me. So it's basically like medium difficulty, I would say. So the bright colors in this puzzle make me so happy and I never felt totally stuck. You know, I always felt like I was moving forward on it. Plus the pieces hold together really well, which is something I always appreciate. I could even pick the entire thing up without it crumbling. Overall, I would definitely recommend this puzzle if you want something with bright colors that will take up a lot of time while you're stuck at home over the next month. There were a few things that felt lower quality than other puzzles I've done, but nothing major that actually hampered doing the puzzle. So for $12, you get a lot of puzzling time, and it's something that definitely looks impressive when you're finished. So I would love to know in a comment, have you ever done this puzzle or any other gradient puzzles? Is this the kind of puzzle that you would like to do, or do you prefer more traditional puzzle images. So I hope you are all staying safe, staying home, unless you work an essential job. And if you are a medical worker or a grocery store employee or a mail carrier or a sanitation worker or any of the other essential jobs that are keeping our society running and keeping all of us doing puzzles at home safe, I want to say a huge heartfelt Thank you. So instead of a code word for if you're still watching to the end of this video, this time I would just love for you to leave a comment thanking all of the workers who are going out there and still doing their jobs and putting themselves and their health at risk in order to keep the rest of us safe. And if any of them happen to watch this video, maybe it can brighten their day. So thank you so much for watching. Happy puzzling, and I'll see you all next time.